Let's take uh, CZ5, for mm -hmm. example, yes. which uh, apparently very different in appearance, at least. Yes, the mm -hmm. uh, Long March 5 is uh, the next generation of uh, uh, rockets. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, uh, much uh, bigger in size. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, it has uh, a different uh, uh, it is using fuel. different fuel. Yes, uh -huh. uh, how different? More, more environmental friendly. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, also. Uh, the size is uh, much bigger, of course. Mm -hmm. It's about, I think, it's about five, five meters in meters. diameter. Yeah. And of course, the main uh, objective is to achieve about two to two point five times uh, of the existing. This part is a special part. Oh yes, that's uh -huh. also very special. Uh -huh. uh, well. Uh, the, 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 the size is going to achieve 2.5 mm -hmm. of the payload of the mm -hmm. existing rocket. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. here is the fairing, which mm -hmm. is uh, uh, specially designed for, the, for this uh, rocket. It's first going to protect the, the equipment inside mm -hmm. and also the design, the shape, what mm -hmm. is called uh, the common curve, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is also going to uh, uh, have a, a jack reduction mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. Rockets are getting bigger and the locations has to be changed as well. Currently we are using a Jiu Quan mm -hmm. launching center. Yes, yes. To, it launched Tiangong 1 and it's going to launch Shenzhou 8. Yes, but it is, why uh, it is uh, chosen? We know the Jiu Quan is near, near the sort of uh, desert. Uh, so there's not too much rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no storm. Uh, so the weather is good. Uh, it's about 300 uh, days out of uh, a year mm -hmm. uh, we can have a long chain uh, weather. Mm -hmm. And of course it's also uh, away from the populated uh, cities uh, mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. so it's safe. It's safe, but as the uh, rockets are getting bigger, we have to choose another place because of the low latitude and the convenience of transportation. Yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Jiu, Jiu Chuan is nice, but uh, mm -hmm. it's difficult to move the huge rockets of uh, hundreds of tons. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we can do this uh, easily uh, through the sea, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, French uh, did uh, for their Ariana. They mm -hmm. also launched it uh, in Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, and also Winza, as you said, uh, the altitude is uh, low, uh, so it's close to the equator. So the launching can make uh, use or benefit from the Earth's rotation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the future plan for Wenchang is going to be like this, probably, that the future China's own space station will be sent into the space piece by piece mm -hmm. right from here. Yeah, especially at Tiangong 2 and Tiangong 3. Tiangong 2 and Tiangong 3, yes. and all with environmentally friendly mm -hmm. fuels. Yes. All right, that's basically about uh, the rockets that's going to carry Shenzhou 8 into space and Shenzhou, uh, Shenzhou 8 itself and also the locations that the rockets and the module that are going to be sent. Back to you, Zoe. All right, thank you, Dongling, for your explanation. We're going to have another launch pad very soon in southern Hainan province. Well, China has a long-term goal for its space exploration program, and the launch of the Shenzhou 8 space is just one of the missions that will be accomplished during this program's undertaking. Peter Corveos takes a look at the China Space Station program. According to the China National Space Administration, or CNSA, China's space program consists of three stages. Phase one is the launch of a manned space shuttle that will execute various space experiments. The Shenzhou 5 and 6 have completed this stage's mission. The launch of a space laboratory marks phase two of the program. One of the missions during this stage will be the docking of a manned space shuttle and a space lab, which is a prototype of China's ultimate space station to carry out experiments. Shenzhou 7 was the third human space flight which included the first Chinese extravehicular activity, or EVA, a milestone during this phase. The launch of the Tiangong Space Lab and Shenzhou 8 to 10 space shuttles is expected to complete the rest of the second phase missions, which paves the way for China's ultimate goal of constructing a space station. Its operation is part of phase three and will take place in the future. Tiangong-1 is the first Chinese space laboratory model. It is intended as an experimental testbed 
to develop rendezvous and docking capabilities needed to support a larger space station complex. Tiangong-1 is expected to be visited by three Shenzhou missions during its operational lifetime, the unmanned Shenzhou-8 in 2011 and the manned Shenzhou-9 and 10 in 2012. After spending approximately two years in orbit, Tiangong-1 will return to Earth in 2013. It will be replaced over the following decade by the larger Tiangong-2 and Tiangong-3 models, which will conduct more sophisticated space experiments and probes. Tiangong-2 will fulfill various experiments, introduce new technologies, and possibly develop space medicine. The full-size multi-model Tiangong-3 space station will have astronauts stationed inside. The station will be supplied by cargo shuttles. CNSA says the Tiangong-3, China's first full-size space station, will be a realistic and multifunctional station to perform experiments, production, probing and storing, which they believe will produce fruitful results. For example, the space station will have the ability to develop new types of vegetables and fruits or produce new materials in space. China set a goal of having its space station to be in place by 2020. Peter Cabellos, CCTV. By the year 2020, China is expected to have its first space station. And uh, for more discussions, we're now joined by John Lewis, Mr. Yang Guang, and Mr. Shen Zhigong. What do you make of the speed and level of China's space program? Back in 2003, China sent its first astronaut into space. Uh, last year, China has lunar probe. And now China is about to have its a prototype space lab, John. I think the, uh, my first impression is that the way that China is doing this is strikingly different from the way that the Soviet Union and the United States did it. How different? Because, different in this way, that the Soviet Union and the United States were racing at breakneck speed, trying to uh, anticipate what the other country was doing and beat them to it. And, for that, uh, and also, they were working with 1960-era technology. Now, China has developed a list of priorities for technologies that it needs to develop and is progressing through them in an orderly way. There's a much lower level of risk associated with a program that is done carefully and deliberately. Uh, it may seem at first sight that China is far behind uh, the Soviet Union and the United States, but in fact China is doing this with 21st century technology, mm. which means that things are uh, can be done with much more confidence and much more effectively. Could you please give us some examples? What are the technologies that are quite different uh, from the previous generation? Well, just, just to take the example of communications, uh, the Soviet Union launched many space flights before they attempted to use a satellite relay to communicate with their, their, uh, their uh, cosmonauts. Uh, they used a MOLIA uh, satellite relay, which is a, their communication satellites in highly eccentric orbits around Earth so that they view almost half of Earth's surface area at any given time. So uh, they, they gave much better coverage mm. for tracking and uh, monitoring the spacecraft. So uh, uh, with China using satellites in geosynchronous orbit way out here that cover almost half of Earth's surface area at any time, uh, that, that's a clear operational advantage. It makes mm. it easier to uh, see what the spacecraft is doing, to send commands to the spacecraft, to get, get information back from it. And uh, it means that all the onboard systems can be monitored by stations here on the ground. It's a, a great advantage. So uh, now that's just, just one aspect. The other aspect is onboard electronics and computers. The computers that were in the early days of the Soviet and American space program, even the computers flown on the, the American space shuttle, which you know, apparently... 20 was years a, ago. Actually, it was a 1970 design, 40 years ago. <laughs> right. uh, those computers are unbelievably primitive by modern standards. After a few shuttle flights, the American astronauts brought their laptop computers on board because their little laptop computers were faster and more powerful than the ones built into the shuttle. So 
uh, or no. is it because the space technology is developing so fast? It, it's because electronics technology develops so fast, mm -hmm. yes. And that continues to happen. The computing power that you can have aboard a spacecraft now is very impressive, and it means that all kinds of onboard monitoring functions can be carried out very, very fast and efficiently. Mm -hmm. So there are, uh, there's also uh, the technology of rendezvous and docking, which uh, w had never been done before the Gemini and Soyuz programs. Uh, now there's a long history of rendezvous and docking. China knows in general that it can be done and has hardware that is capable of doing this. Mm -hmm. So uh, the demonstration of that hardware can be done in one or two flights. It doesn't require the Gemini program, mm -hmm. which took 12 flights to, to, to uh, invent and prove and develop and test rendezvous and docking mm -hmm. procedures. So you, want, you agree that as a latecomer, China also has advantages when we are trying to use this uh, rendezvous and docking technology. We don't have to spend so much time and experiments to do it. What is the advantages uh, of China uh, now practicing and using the rendezvous and docking? Uh, well, uh, you know that uh, Shenzhou 8 belongs to a uh, space transportation system. The official name of space shuttle is also space transportation system, STS. Mm. And the, the function of this vehicle is to take crew from the ground to orbit and also safely take them back. And we do the rendezvous and docking uh, procedure, which is necessary for building the future space station, also for the future deep space exploration. Um, we have adopted many advanced technologies. For example, mm. uh, we have a more powerful uh, solar panel, which adopts the triple junction uh, gallium arsenide semiconductor, which is more efficient than the future model uh, than the. Uh, than the, uh, than the solar panels before. Mm. Uh, it has uh, efficiency about 50% higher than before. Mm. And this uh, solar panel, panel uh, although it is uh, almost the same area as that of Shenzhou series before, uh, but uh, it has an output of about 1800 watts. Mm. You mean the solar panels are more efficient on Tiangong? Uh, on both Tiangong and both Shenzhou 8 mm. is more efficient than before. Mm. And also, we have, uh, although uh, there are many experience of talking and rendezvous of foreign countries, but we adopt a very different uh, rendezvous and docking microwave reader. We adopt a completely different system, which is called um, pseudocode continuous wave interferometry angle measurement. It's very complex. Mm. It is the first. It time. doesn't make any sense to average uh, <laughs> audience, but what exactly is its difference? Uh, you know that uh, in the uh, docking reader of Apollo uh, and also uh, Sawyer's, they have servo units, servo mm -hmm. units. So it is possible for a failure of the servo uh, unit, and and it will not move, and this will influence the range of the uh, radio waves. Mm -hmm. But we have a uh, completed. A completely uh, fixed an antenna mm. of our uh, docking and rendezvous uh, microwave radar. Mm. So it is more reliable and more safe for the docking procedure. All right. You are now watching a special broadcast on the launch of Shenzhou 8, which is about to couple with Tiangong 1, China's first space lab.